So in the future, we eliminate money, you go to an access center and access wherever you want. It's the same for doctors, lawyers, there's no lawyers in the future, there's no investment bankers, there's no brokers, there's nobody that contributes nothing to society. Everybody be brought up as a functional unit of society. Now if you go out here and look at your own cities, you will see every building is a different size, a different design. All the windows are different sizes. So you can't design for sustainability, because he makes windows a different size, he makes windows another size. So how are you going to have sustainability with all these different kinds of cars? What you need is intelligent transportation that takes you anywhere within the city in a short amount of time. Now you're going to have to take my word for this. When I was a kid, women as a rule used to operate elevators. They turned a crank. They never quite got to the floor. They had to move it up until that elevator arrived on the floor. And if the doors closed on you, too bad. Today they back off and you press 17, the elevator stops exactly on the 17th floor. You don't have that. You move people out. And in our society, we move people out of government. It's all operated by machine. Meaning, it, not the people, just the products. The farming, the agriculture, the production, it's all machine design, program. But it does not program or design people. People are free to live whatever lifestyle they want to. If they hurt other people, they're helped. They're not put in prison. So, I used to think, like most of you, that some people are born killers. Some people are born losers. Some people are lazy. Some have a lot of incentive. All that's generated by environment. I didn't know that. I knew this, though. But I know that if you have a dog with six puppies, and the puppies can't get to mommy's milk, the other puppies push them away, the little weak one. Did you know that the weak one that's pushed away always, not sometimes, becomes a leader? How many of you knew that? The little kid that gets hand-down clothing. He says, Mommy, I want new clothing. I don't want Bobby's suit. When he gets a job, he never wears second home hand clothing. Your environment shapes your values. If you don't understand what that means. So they believe at one time, maybe, maybe a Japanese baby would learn to speak Japanese faster than an English baby if you brought them both to Japan. And they tried it, and they both learned at the same rate. You cannot pass on inherited, uh, uh, learned experiences. Bigotry, prejudice is learned. Don't play with that little Greek boy. You're not a Greek. You don't only associate with that girl. She's not your fate, your nationality. So your parents are constantly programming you, your elders, to an old world that they knew of. If you take your grandmother to Miami Beach, and she sees the girls walking around their butts hanging out, They've gone too far, and she'd be right where she's coming from. But she's not right. There's no right, no wrong. There's no good or bad people. There are people brought up with different values. Like if you're brought up in Sicily, and a guy looks at your sister with sexual intent, you whack him. Because if you're brought up in the, if you catch your wife in bed with another guy in Latin America, you can shoot them both. Or you can shoot your wife or the guy. And the judge in that country can understand that. <laughs> but in the same society, would you say, honey, how much longer are you going to be? And then, then you say, where is it that I'm not meeting your needs? Do you understand? People don't talk like that. They don't even think like that. You see, will you let that guy say that? When I was a kid, all movies, there were no problem solving. There were two guns that I pulled out, and he solved his problems right away by shooting those he didn't agree with. So you see, the movies you see is the same old soap opera over and over again. Different characters with the same, it's who's fucking who. That's what it's about. But they're having an affair. So they can't use that kind of language. You can't just have to go to the toilet. I go to the restroom. There's no place to rest in any restroom. <laughs> <laughs> so the world you live in is, is really artificial as hell. Now even the word love, I said before, sometimes you love a person, sometimes you don't, sometimes you like yourself, so love is a fluctuating thing. So if you marry a guy because he's great, then you find out certain things you don't like about him, you start to think, do I really love him or don't? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. 
Depends on what he does. So, so you see, it's safe for women. But if you believe in romantic love all your life, the guy's going to be wonderful. The guy with the golden hair, the guy that rides a white horse, you get that from movies. The movies are really concerned with one thing, profit. They don't give a damn. They don't make movies that are against war. It wouldn't serve their interest. Do you understand? They make, if they make one movie against war, they'll make 500 pro-war. Because there's more money. So, you live in a world that's based on the monetary system. And that's why you can't have justice. So when people say to me, when you talk about sustainability, I can't talk about it because it has different meanings with different people. The only kind of sustainability that I know of is one world. If you bring all the nations together, those of you that don't quite understand that, the cost of World War II, I'm talking about flattening out Germany, England was bombed flat, and all of those costs, knocking out the museums, veterans payments after the war, could have housed everybody on earth, could have built hospitals all over the world, and give every research lab whatever the hell they needed. What a waste, what a form of stupidity. 400 ships on the bottom of the sea, loaded with copper, brass, tungsten, all these valuable things sunk it. We won the war. We lost a lot of resources and human beings for no reason at all. We keep going to war, and then it seems to stop. Why is that? Because there's, no, there's a lot of profit in war. When you own a factory and makes airplanes, you make a lot of money. That's why I said, in times of war, if there was total conscription of men, machines, and they told you to buy war bonds, that'll bring Johnny home faster. Well, if money and your bonds bring Johnny home faster, why not conscript all the money of all the banks and bring Johnny home fast? Because there's no profit in it. So you see, the world you live in is unsustainable. It's going to run into jams all over the world, continuously. Now, bankers would like to lend you money at interest. When you put your money in a bank, they lend it out. And if a person borrows money from the bank, they get the interest, and that's their potential of finances. And they can get money from the government printing office for three cents on the dollar. Before World War II, we told the American industry, expand. And they said, hell no, what are we going to do with a big plant after the war? So they taxed the American people, their money, to expand all the war plants, then gave it to them for three cents on the dollar. The American public really got shafted. They're not allowed to use that symbol. But they don't even know they're shafted. They think somehow government money is used. They don't know that government money is your money. And the government lives on your money. And But they try to condition you to think they're great great politicians. Well, that's part of the crime. So that's why I say we won't make the history book for the future. The people of the future will be so different. The children will never be given books like Cinderella or Dickie Dare and the sheep on the way I met a cow. The cow said, moo moo. Then I met a sheep and the sheep and said, ba ba. Well, that's, you fill the kid's head with that kind of crap. What do you expect? <laughs> then you tell them what's religion. God loves you. And when a hurricane comes, it doesn't go over the church, it blows the church away too. <laughs> and if a bus full of nuns, it doesn't go over or around that bus, it blows that bus away. It says, it's the will of Allah. You know, or, or it's God's will, depending on the way you're brought up. If I design the bridge and the cave in, it's the will of Allah. <laughs> it's your math that's off, buddy. <laughs> and you can't get away with that kind of religious crap. Well, the Lord acts in strange ways. If I say the bridge acts in strange ways, I can't get away with that. So, science is not perfect. It's just closer approximations of reality. That's all. When he says, I talk to God, there are a lot of people that think God talks to them. Or they talk to God. They can't even talk to Einstein. They can't even talk to a lawyer or a doctor about medical problems. How are they going to talk to God? Just imagine, uh, uh, not Arthur C. Clarke, but I'm just saying, there are many scientists that believe that someday extraterrestrials will come here.